Private Capital Markets Association is uh, committed to a very strong culture of compliance within the private capital markets. And that's something we expect from our members as well, uh, to do the same. Our success uh, as an industry means leaders in the dealer or issuer activities uh, that we undertake to work together for the best outcomes for our investors. Our success instills public confidence and also helps to ensure regulatory framework that encourages success right across uh, Canada. How about everyone presenting themselves a little bit and letting us know a little bit more about your product in the exempt market? What would be the top 10 items that dealers and investors want to know? So Randy and Vico has stood very strong in the test of times. What is the secret to being successful in this market? Yeah, I think in the, in the overall private space, I think, um, you know, just as when you buy real estate, it's all about location, location, location. When you're investing money, it's all about management, management, management. Having a strong management team that not only, it's one thing if I'm a, a real estate agent, I sell a lot of houses and I decide, well, I'm going to go buy, you know, start a real estate fund. Um, doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to be good at it. Uh, Wayne Gretzky is a great example, one of the best hockey players on the planet to ever play the game, and he was a terrible coach. So you really have to have a management team that understands the asset class that they're managing. When I look at Jason and Allison, who founded Invico back in 2005, their experience you know, through Ernst & Young and through previous jobs in oil and gas and pension fund management was they had, um, they've done a lot of things when it came to insolvencies, restructuring companies, taking companies public, mergers and acquisitions. And when you look at the Invico Diversified Income Fund, uh, we are a private debt offering with an energy component where, you know, we're going to have uh, defaults in the portfolio if you're in high yield lending uh, and somebody tells you they've never had any defaults, they've either been around for six months or they're lying to you. Um, so having a management team and an underwriting team that can work those through and get them to be successful down the road is key. And so being able to look at their team and seeing the experience they have, that gave me a lot of confidence when I joined Invico. And when I joined Invico, I actually put Jason and Allison through a six-month interview because I did not sign up with them right away. I actually told them to put me on contract for six months until I got to know them a little bit better before I would join Invico. So that's how strongly I felt about the management team. And given my 30 years experience in this industry, which started here in Montreal with uh, Talvis Fund Management back in 1990, I think it was Jonathan from Faskin that mentioned Jean-Guy Desjardins. He was our CEO uh, back in 1990. Um, I think I made a pretty good decision in joining Invico. Thank you, Randy. Nancy, the cost of capital is so important, and tr Triumph is such a strong advocate of this. What is the cost of capital, and what does it mean, and how important is it in the exempt market? Is the opportunity considered real estate or play or a cash for play? So uh, I think cost of capital is probably one of the most important things I think we think about when investing anyway. And this, it, what it is, is it's how much of your dollar is actually going into the asset versus upfront fees. So one of the things that we can do as investors or market participants is obviously, again, asking that upfront question, saying how much of our dollar is going into the asset, and this is what we can do to mitigate uh, a significant amount of our risk. Um, it has been an honor to represent Triumph as one of my clients, and uh, he, as coming in as a real estate fund, you're competitive to a lot of really wonderfully good real estate opportunities out there. Uh, so what David Wallach did was he wanted to ensure that he was remarkably competitive uh, by having, on average, one of the lowest cost of capital funds um, on the market right now so very important the exempt market space has actually given us a platform to grow our business with patient capital and with people that understand the, the business cycle you know we're taking the emotion out of the investor base and it allows us to actually invest our own capital beside beside the investors with confidence that our share price is not going to be affected you know by a tweet by whoever it could be that day so as a result of that, what you're seeing is a unique opportunity like hospitality come into this space. Hospitality is unique to this space simply because it's very difficult to get into. You need to have a lot of capital in the bank, you need to have the, uh, the ability to run the international franchise, and you also have to have the experience running the, the international franchise, otherwise you don't even get into the industry to start with. So. What, this, what the exempt market does for us at Trinity Hotels is it allows us the access to capital 
and the, the ability for us to, to grow our platform at a pace that we want to grow it at. What it brings for the investor is a unique investment opportunity where they have not only oversight by the board, but there's also oversight by the brand itself. So it's a different sort of play, right? Rather than just being the, the oversight of our board, you have a big parent or big brother right behind us saying, you know, is that being operated the correct way? And that, that I think really brings a lot of unique, a uh, unique perspective into the space for investors. Thank you, Curtis. Uh, Jamie, Secure Capital. Jamie, you've been in the business for a long time, as mentioned earlier. What has made you so successful uh, in your business and a popular product in the exempt market? You know, and the other thing you can talk about a little bit is um, the management model of the company and, and the governance side. Um, well, what's made us successful, I think, um, is we manage a portfolio of uh, residential mortgages in uh, Ontario and Quebec, and uh, we've been doing that for 13 years, and uh, we've returned 8% annually to our investors um, every year. We've never missed a dividend payment in, uh, in 13 years, so I guess that speaks to the success. And um, as far as uh, corporate governance, this is where I need my notes now. Just give me a second here. Um, first thing is, uh, is transparency. Um, with transparency, we provide audited statements every year that uh, all our reps, exempt market uh, dealer reps and uh, investors have access to. Uh, we also provide a quarterly, uh, what we call green sheet, which is really um, sort of a fund fact every uh, quarter to our, again, to our reps and uh, hopefully the reps pass that on to the investors. Uh, so that's the transparency part. Um, you know, accountability is also a big part of uh, corporate governance. I can't say that word, but you know what I mean. And um, we're accountable to our investors because, uh, I mean, we in, ourselves as a management team uh, own 20% uh, of the units in our fund. So we're gonna invest the money uh, for our investors just the way we would want to invest for ourselves because we own 20% of the units. So, you know, we gotta, we're highly invested, so strongly accountable for our investments. Um, and of course, cor corporate governance, governance is uh, good security. Our investments are in all Canadian real estate. Uh, again, Ontario and Quebec, so uh, very, very little fluctuations in the Canadian real estate market, thank God, over the last 13 years. So um, that's how we've been managing our funds successfully. How do issuers make money and generate returns for investors? Well, that's a good question. Um, and, then every, of course, and then, of course, yeah. investors want accountability at the same time. So. Of course, yeah. Uh, I can't speak for everybody, but for, for our company, it's, it's pretty simple. We've got a simple model. Uh, we have borrowers across Ontario and Quebec who borrow money, uh, mortgage money, because they can't go to the bank to get their financing due to credit issues or they're self-employed or they can't meet the TDS ratios. And on average, they're borrowing money at uh, 12%. And um, we pay our investors 8%. So, you know, we make our money in between the 12 and the 8. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's how us as an issuer make money. And uh, as far as um, accountability, um, we make sure that the investors are paid first, um, and then the expenses are paid, and then the management's paid. Uh, and that's a very unusual model uh, in our industry. Um, a, a lot of um, competitors in our industry um, have a performance model whereby if they do really well, they pay a little more. If they don't do so well, they pay the investors a little less. Whereas we give our investors a, str uh, a straight 8% annually and uh, we pay them first and then worry about the profitability after. Curtis? I think the key to, to try and run both of these parallel and tr try to run that real fine line in between is really trying to emulate a win-win situation. Because if you don't have a win-win situation, first of all, you're offside on one side or the other it always makes for a long-term disaster in a partnership. So if you have a win-win where everybody's aligned, speaking to Jamie's points from before, where you don't have, you have management paid after, right? 
you have expenses under control, right? That, that, that sort of thing. Uh, making sure that you have vested partners, right? I can speak for our fund where we have 35% of the equity in from our, share, our own, from the principals themselves. And as long as everybody's aligned like that and understands both sides, then I think you can have a good union that can go forward and you can accomplish those kind of uh, conflicting goals. I, if you don't have a win-win situation from the beginning, I think it's really hard to manage. And um, I've seen it, I think we've all seen it in the industry where those were not aligned and, it, and usually they did not turn out well. Nancy, what does your model look like? <laughs> well, I couldn't agree with my colleagues more. Um, I have a favorite quote, and given we have an upcoming election, it has to do with politics and investment. And that is, if you want the truth, follow the money. Uh, so when we're talking about alignment of interests, absolutely, we want to make sure that management is motivated not only to return our capital as investors, but also to provide us some essence of a return. I think we all know how real estate actually generates capital. Obviously, you're investing low into an asset. You thereby improve value. So the experience of management is absolutely crucial. We have that low cost of capital. Uh, but one thing I like about Triumph that's a bit unique is that it's uh, mandated or its alignment is it has to pay investors back 100% of your contributed capital plus a preferred return prior to any profit share going to management. So then we as investors can ask ourselves, well, what's his motivation? His motivation is to get our money back so he can get paid. So I, again, I, I have to agree wholeheartedly with my colleagues up here. That alignment has to be strong. Um, further to that is also, again, corporate governance um, and ensuring, like these are private market issuers. These are non-reporting issuers. So we want to make sure that people that have the expertise of the specific asset, in this case, real estate, are sitting at the table, not tied to the profit center of the fund in any way. They're simply paid there to act in the best interest of investors. So prior to any acquisition of a commercial real estate asset, he has to put together a due diligence package and it has to get signed off by three independent directors uh, prior to actually approving that acquisition. Same with any disposition or sale of an asset. Um, so you again as investors then have the comfort of knowing you have got three experienced individuals, again, sitting at the table acting on your behalf, just to kind of give it a little added layer of security. Thank you, Nancy. Randy? Yeah, you know, I think it all, for me, it always comes down to transparency and governance based on my experience. And when I look at what, uh, what Invico does, believe it or not, up until two or three years ago, as an issuer, you did not have to produce an audited financial statement to your investors. It was an option. Can you imagine one of the key financial information for investors to be able to look and track a company? It was an option. That's about two or three years ago. Now it's, it's mandatory. You have to uh, do audited financial statements. Vico has been doing fin audited financial statements since 2005 and since our fund was launched. So the transparency to our investors on a reporting basis every quarter, every month, giving a return, disclosing our NAVs when, when we're asked, uh, making sure that the investors are being taken care of and know what's going on in the portfolio so there's no surprise because we've seen things where there's no audited financial statement and all of a sudden three years later it's like boom the money's gone the investors going what happened i thought everything was okay so for us it's pretty simple we knew, we use no leverage no debt in our fund we uh we do about two two to three year loans one to 15 million we charge 13 18 percent we pay our investors eight to ten if there's money left over we share in the profit and it's that simple. And we have also cumulative features built into our performance for whatever reason, if we didn't hit that eight to 10%, we haven't in six years, knock on wood. But if we don't hit that, we have to catch that up next year before management can take any profit. So again, it comes down to management's interest being aligned with the unit holders. And I learned, on, learned very early on in my career, and I think Jamie alluded to you, if you put unit holders first, everything else falls into place. That's simple. Thank you, Randy.